It is the second Friday of Photo Friday, and it is raining again outside. This is seriously, it's crazy for Californians to experience this much rain. We need it, which is awesome, but it's still crazy nonetheless. So anyways, um, I want to jump into some editing. Uh, just so you guys know, just so you're, you're comfortable with the interface, um, down in this corner, you can barely see it right now, um, I have my key caster so you can see the keys that I'm using. Um, and yeah, I want to edit some uh, product photography, so let's jump right into it. Alright, so... I'm just gonna kind of run through here, see which photos I want to edit. Um, as you can see, I did a couple different edits. Um, now, I didn't shoot this with my macro, uh, 100 millimeter uh, macro lens. I did have to shoot with my 85 millimeter, which is unfortunate. So it's not going to be super clear on these. Um, these close-up shots. So you know what? I probably won't edit that because it'd be a bad example. Um, so why don't we do some purses? Uh, show you kind of how I edit that. So <clears throat> for this, I want to show you uh, basically the types of shots that you're gonna have to get for product photography: um, front, back, um, and then always in these like Louis Vuitton bags. There's these little identification tags, and it's really, really important to get those because it shows um, that the item is genuine. Because, of course, you have a ton of knockoffs, and people will try and sell you something that's fake for a thousand dollars or so. Um, so why don't we, why don't we just edit this today? Uh, we'll do a couple shots in here, and we'll call it a day. How about that? So if you look closely, let's see, which one do I want to use? Um, this one's a little bright, but let's see, maybe it's because it's really bright and raw. Yes, okay. So, I already kind of tweaked this a little bit, but uh, I like this one because, look, it's flat and it's held up tight. And if you look right here, you can see a little string. And what that is, is fishing wire. Fishing wire is great to use. Um, if you're trying to do bag photography because if you look at any product photography ever of bags it looks like it's being held up you know like a woman would or a man it doesn't matter whatever uh, <laughs> would hold up a purse so anyways uh, I'm gonna use this as my starting point and kind of just bring down the highlights bring out the shadows want to make it look as evenly lit as possible and as a matter of fact I shot this exact shot with that right there, the Savage uh, Lightbox, which has just been wonderful. It's been great for product photography. Um, let's see, it looks pretty good color balance wise, clarity, maybe up a little bit. All right, so let's open this up as our starting point. Okay. Now, obviously, I want to eliminate here and here, which I'll show you how to do that. And then there's some, fortunately there's some sensor dust on my camera. I uh, can't really avoid that. So be it. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is open up an additional photo. I'm gonna brighten it up. And what I'm gonna use this for is, you can see down here, basically kinda just the underbelly of the bag. I can brighten that up a little bit. So let's open this up. Drop it on top of this. Okay. Let's see, is Keycaster even working? Yeah, it is. Okay. But it's not great. Hopefully, you guys can kind of see. I'll still call them out. Uh, okay, anyways. Um, okay, so I'm going to create a mask. And then with B, select my brush. And then Control plus Alt Option. I uh, can change the size so I can either go up in size or I can go down in size just by simply dragging the cursor. So left smaller, right larger, and then additionally if I want to change the hardness up to bring the percentage down, 
down to, to make it harder. Now, you always want to go low as possible because you want to be subtle. So I'll probably keep it around 5. Okay. My opacity is set to 19, so it's decent. All right, so I'm just going to kind of start erasing the underside. I'm going to bring down the sides a little bit. Just kind of brighten it up. Make it a little more even. That's a little too bright. That's okay, I can just kind of go back. So, as you can see, that's that's now. That was before. Just to brighten it up a little bit. Uh, so actually, I like how that looks. Uh, maybe I can go up here. So press Z to zoom in. Okay, maybe brighten this a little bit. Pressing X, so on your mask, you can press X to select your black uh, and X to go back to white. Black reveals the layer below, white uh, covers that. So have it on black, bring down the size of the brush a little bit, control alt, and then just going to the left. Okay, and then let's see, just kind of brighten this handle a little bit. And you can see now that we're closer, you can really see the, the string. All right, so I'm gonna zoom out. And you can see just brighter, just kind of bringing up the shadows, but you don't want to get rid of them completely just because, I mean, it just starts looking fake. So I'm gonna flatten this, Shift, Command, E. It uh, brings all the layers in. And then I'm going to, let's see. I'm going to select here on the outside probably a much better way to do this, but this is just kind of how I do it. Okay, and then I'm going to press B, Control Alt, increase the size, and then I'm going to select this white color over here and just start kind of <coughs> painting away. I'm going to increase the opacity though so it goes even quicker. So I'm just kind of painting away trying to stay away from this edge and you'll see in a moment why okay then come over here same thing now I always feel like there's a better way to do this so if someone sees this and they are like Troy you're an idiot there's a better way to do this by all means please show me because I feel like there's always a better way so that looks pretty good, but as you can kind of see, it almost looks like there's it's like shadowier here in this area than it is on the outside. So I'm going to let's see how can I do this. I'm gonna zoom in, select around the bag as close as possible, very relatively quickly. Probably speed this up in post. It's relatively boring, although I'm going fairly quickly. I could probably use a different the uh, the other lasso tool just to smart select it, but I've gotten quick enough with this type of selection that it's fine. Okay, so it's a pretty good selection of the bag. Get rid of this here. Okay, Z, I'm zooming out. And then I'm gonna save the selection just for the purpose of having it there always. So I'm just gonna call it bag and save selection. You can pull up your selection by going to select and save selection. Okay. Um, okay, so now I have the bag selected. I'm going to select the inverse. So with that, Shift Command I, I've selected the inverse. And uh, let's see what this uh, what the color range tool will do. But I'm gonna try and select within that, that color range. It's probably too subtle, but 
yeah see even if I select there you can kind of see though when I select in here and I'm going through the fuzziness so the higher it is the more like uh, the more uh, leisure I guess it is about um, you know it's not as strict about what color it's selecting whereas if you go lower it is much more strict I mean it wants nearly an exact uh, color of what you selected so I'm gonna try and hover around 50 to see if that does a good job okay maybe maybe 60 okay let's see what that does okay so it kind of tightened the selection a little bit anyways uh, I am going to try and kind of just overall brighten the surrounding area and make it all even so kind of come in here take that color down here and just kind of brighten it all okay and then if I really want if I want a true white you can press X actually sorry D to uh, kind of reset your your paintbrush tools and it if you press D it will always default to black and white Sorry about that, it stopped recording. So if you press D, it will always um, default to black and white, um, just for future reference. And then if you select D, uh, you can press X to switch between black and white. And I'm actually gonna select white and go through it all. Okay, I don't like don't like that. That was kind of the glaring part to me. No. Okay. So. And then I'm kind of just deselecting it. Okay. So let's see. If I press B and just kind of go around, that should be good. You know that opacity is a little high. Bring it down a little bit. So it's not as. So there you go. I mean that looks. That looks fun. I kind of just went over the handle with white again. So that that looks pretty good to me. Um, no real reflections of the lights. The background looks nice and white, um, which is always good. And. Uh, even lighting, the underbelly is not too dark. Um, so I'm going to zoom in here and get rid of the string. And simply by zooming in, pressing J, which is your your uh, heel brush, bringing down the diameter of it, and just simply selecting that one, got rid of that, and let's see how. Oh, that was a bad selection. Let's see how good it does here. Not bad. Let's see, I'm going to clone stamp, just kind of even that out a little bit. So let's see how, how that looks from a distance. Yeah, that looks good. Cool. Uh, let's see, I can't ever tell. This is bad, but I can't tell if it's a sensor dust sometimes or if it's on my actual monitor so word to the wise uh, clean your monitor more frequently than you would you would think so okay that looks good now what I'm gonna do is just a simple um, dodge and burn so with that I'm gonna go shift O or actually O and so that brings up my dodge and burn and I can simply shift between them uh, by pressing shift O so that'll oscillate between uh, Dodge, burn, and saturation brush. Um, so I'm going to do my my uh, dodge first. Go. Actually, let me do it more cleanly across. Okay. And then next, I'm going to do my burn. Simply go across. Maybe a little more. And uh, there you go. So I think 
that is a solid shot and it kind of just went through the gambit of showing you guys uh, what is necessary um, to do so and again um, this was the original shot this is this shot now um, let's see what else so yeah I mean when you're doing product oh, I guess that was the back whatever um, so when you're doing product photography just make sure you get if it's a bag um, you get the front so this would be a solid front get the back and make sure that you have the uh, the um, strap I guess uh, held up by fishing wire and then additionally if you're dealing with a Louis Vuitton or Chanel or high high end high scale um, uh, bag or jewelry that you get a shot inside of this uh, tag and that will be in everything and you, you that is necessary especially if you want to sell the product and if you're working with a client they really always want that um, so yeah cool and you can see I have a couple other bags I gotta go through but uh, pretty pretty cool stuff so thank you guys for tuning in um, <clears throat> I really think this is gonna be a good series and it's a good break for me to kind of break away and, and kind of give a little bit of a tutorial on, on different types of photography um, I appreciate all my new subscribers I think I'm over 600 now which is just awesome I love that um, and if you uh, if you have any comments, questions, uh, please feel free to ask. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. And additionally, uh, if you want to see my photography, I do landscape, um, portrait, long exposure photography. You can see on my Instagram at Troy Nicolic, or you can just go to my website um, TroyNicolic.com. Um, so until next week, I will talk to you guys later. Bye bye.